Damn, guys. Oh, their voices are so good together. Ooh, she was right. That low voice fits so good in there. Hi guys, Yuri here again. Welcome to YB Plays Music. It has been a while since I've recorded a new video. And that's because I've been in Hawaii for a couple of weeks. And some of you might know that, but I'm safely back in Belgium and right in time because I saw a couple of days when I, after I got back, uh, I saw the situation from uh, what happened in Maui, the whole coastline where there were big like fires and burns. I hope the situation gets better like soon, but I saw there are a lot of people that died, a lot of people that are missing. Uh, that whole area is like shut down basically. We got to know a couple of people over there too. I hope they are fine as well. But my prayers go to Maui uh, and Hawaii. That said guys, whilst I was in Hawaii, I got a new subscriber on my Patreon. And a silver member in that. It's the first silver member that I have on Patreon. And this is Tal. And he suggested this reaction. And I'm reacting today to Taylor Swift's movie called Folklore. The Long Pond Studio Sessions. Apparently, during COVID in 2020, she brought out a surprise album called Folklore. And this is apparently about what happened then or how the recording sessions went. I'm not too sure. Now, you guys know that I post these reactions afterwards on YouTube as well. Like, depends, like a couple of weeks after. Cut up version of this for copyright reasons course so if you want to see the full version it's on patreon i'm gonna read you what tal has told me some information about this so let's go hi i subscribe to the patreon because i like your reactions and i hope that you will be willing to react to taylor swift's movie folklore the long pond studio sessions it's a movie where taylor talks and performs all the tracks from her 2020 surprise album called Folklore. During lockdown, Taylor wrote a surprise folk album in three months and released it. She worked with Aaron Desner from the band The National, don't know who that is, and Jack Antonov, who has been a close friend of hers uh, for many years, um, don't know that guy either, <laughs> where he and Taylor produced her album since her albums since 2014. It's a folk slash pop album that was written during the lockdown of 2020, so it's a very chill and muted album. I'm not sure if it's like that much different than her other uh, content, her, her other songs. Uh, I don't know that much about Taylor Swift, to be honest. I know a couple of her major songs or the most well-known ones, but uh, I, I don't know too much. But I guess that will change today. At least I will know more after this. Now the video that I'm going to watch has the English subtitles. So that will be definitely uh, helpful. Let's start this reaction. I hope you are ready. I'm... I hope I am. Let's see if everything is alright here. Everything is recording. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, so it is 8.30 in the morning. I sort of unexpectedly started writing the new album. And at that point, I was just like, oh, just, I'm just writing songs in quarantine. And then... This I didn't actually know what kind of instrument she played, or if she played any, but apparently she plays the guitar, at least. Just in the bedroom. You can't go into studios now because they're all closed. And I oh, that's why. Anywhere else. That's um, why. I know that other people do this all the time, so it's actually not that special, but I'm freaking out over it. <laughs> I can imagine, like, these days... There are so many people that are recording stuff from home, me included. But there are so many possibilities as well. Like, it's not the same as it used to be. Like, you had to go to your studio to kind of properly record something decent. You can do a lot from home as well. Like, my recordings are not professional whatsoever. But it's amazing what you can do these days just from your bedroom, basically. But a lot of big artists, of course, like, do their... Uh, recording still in, in studios, right? I assume. We built a home studio in my house. And so it's mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do vocals today in my house. It's, I'm very excited about it. It's chill. It okay, seems so chill. Over there is where 
my recording booth is, and then on the other side of the wall. It's cool that she has like this cloth around the mic. I mean, like acoustic treatment is sometimes more helpful, like behind you than in front of you. But I think with the bed behind her and the and the the curtains on the side, I think it already is a pretty good room to record something in acoustically. Jack? Jack. Holy shit. It's like What's you're that? right there, but instead you're in New York. Oh, she's talking to someone. Freaking out. We've never done this. Was somebody following along her recordings or was that just a random conversation there? Her eighth studio album. I mean, home studio album, the first probably. Wait, musicians recorded separately apart while the album was created at Long Pond Studio. Oh, so the, um, the album was created in Long Pond Studio, but the vocals she recorded at home and all the musicians recorded from their home as well then. Or not. Taylor and the collaborators were never able to play the album together. Until now. Okay. All oh, right. I get where this is going. First day we've been in the same room. Yes. Yeah. First room. Is... So these are the musicians. When lockdown happened, I just found myself completely listless and purposeless, and it, that and that was in the first three days of it. I am wondering where her mic is at right here, and their mics, because there's no way it's the audio from the camera that is filming this part. It's definitely because it's like it changed shots, but the audio stayed the same. And afterwards you would come up and talk to me and you were so nice. And I was like, how do you... Oh, this is Aaron Desner, founding member of National of the National. So I don't know this guy. I don't know this band either. So if, if there's something I, you, you want to tell me or you want to give me some information about them, feel free to do so. So he's co-producer, all right? Well, we all live in different places, so sometimes I'll just make tracks and send them around and send them to Matt. And then lockdown happened, and I texted you, and I was like, hey, would you ever want to work? Do you, do you, are you in that place right now? It must be interesting doing it that way. I've never done it. Uh, like, making something, uh, recording a track, sending it to somebody else that works on that track, like, builds upon that track. And, like, that way, a song is kind of formed. I, I've never done that way, but it seems very interesting to me. Because it starts somewhere, but everybody has their own influence to that. And it's probably very interesting how that evolves to a, to a full song, let alone a full album. I don't know either how old is uh, Taylor Swift, actually. I don't know. And I was like, I don't know if this is a real text. I'm not sure. <laughs> it seems like a bit. Like a friend? Like, well, I was like, is someone pretending now? In the this is Jack. cycling of all of our systems of life that we've known in the pandemic, to either cling to it and try to make it work, or to just say, well, I guess I'm just going to chart a new path and kind of get a frontier mentality. Yeah. I, I didn't even tell my label until a week before we put it out. What was that call like? Oh, she did that outside of her label. That's ballsy, I think. But it is true, like, during COVID, uh, so he basically had two options during lockdown. You could be sitting at home like and be bored, like doing nothing because like everything is shut down. Or you can start something new. You could take new path. Start something that you wanted to do, but you didn't have the time for it. That was the best time to do it, I think. It's also the time where I started doing reaction videos and started doing regular videos in general on my channel. And I, that, that has been a good decision for me. I mean, I think so. So, interesting. I thought it was going to be stressful. My label was like, whatever you want to make, like, we're down. Wow, that's cool. Play this whole thing? Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's really important that we play it for me to realize that it's a real album. Makes sense. Never worked on an album like this. Me neither. If we're going to have to recalibrate everything, we should start with what we love the most first. And I think that was what we were sort of unconsciously doing with this. It turned out that like everybody needed a good cry as well as us. <laughs> <laughs> it's some kind of outlet too. Track two, one. Is it the first? Sorry to interrupt, but let's go back a bit. Let me read what was underneath the title there. Written by Taylor Swift and Aaron Desner. So were they both the main composers of all these songs? 
two lines of guitars. All these guitars too. Yeah, there are two lines of guitar. And get piano, of course. Yeah. Mm. Bass. Oof. Oh, that is the lyrics are so good. If you never bleed, you're never gonna grow. It's like saying if you don't fall, you won't get higher up. And it's like you said before, uh, there's anxiety, but there's like excitement as well. The contrast between those gives, makes life kind of interesting, I would say. Because if there's no anxiety or like negative feelings, how can there be like excitement? Love it. Hmm. Cool vibes. Love this studio version. Okay, different perspective. You know the greatest loves of all time are over now. <laughs> okay, it's it's very cool to hear and the lyrics are super nice. First she was thinking in her perspective, her situation. Now she's um, thinking about the other person that is not with her. And during lockdown, like, a lot of people were alone. Most of the time. So, at some point, you might think, like, how are the other people doing? How are friends and family doing? What are they thinking? What are they doing? What are they trying? Do they have any issues? Are they trying something new? Yeah, sometimes you wonder. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that was a cool song. Very laid back. Very much uh, fitted the feel of the of the scene that they were in, right? Uh, the night before. I didn't really notice if there were any like fires there that's it guys like it's it's cool also when i returned from hawaii uh on my flight back from la to london very coincidental there was a swifty next to me on the plane uh we were talking a bit because she was she came from london all the way to la specifically for a, a concert of taylor swift we were like oh my god that's like it was over a 10 hour flight for that and she's from london Actually, I mean, she's not from there. She lives there, but uh, it would have been cool. We were like joking because I, I told her that I had to do this reaction when I got back home. And I was like, it would be cool. Like if you could join me as a Swifty in this reaction, that there was a Swifty next to me accompanying me for this reaction. But I guess it's not it's not that easy to uh, to arrange, but it would have been fun, though. It would have been fun. Uh, let's continue to watch here. You captured the spirit of the whole record with that song. One in, in the sense of... Oh, it's the one. Yeah, not the first, the one. I think it has a double meaning. The, the opening the album with the words, I'm doing good, I'm on some new shit, and saying yes instead of no, you're updating a former lover on what your life is like now. But it was also, I'm just saying yes, I'm just putting out an album in the worst time you could put one out. I'm just making stuff with someone who I've always wanted to make stuff I mean, it's arguably, it is not the worst time to put it out, because... It depends where and, and what, because a lot of people started watching a lot more YouTube and Netflix and Amazon Prime and such. Uh, there, there were a lot of people like watching and listening to stuff, but they were not like buying. They were not going to concerts, obviously. So that's that. And like it's called The One. It's also open for speculation, which makes it also very interesting. Wait, I didn't see the title of that. The Vintage? What is this called like? The Cardigan. Cardigan? Cardigan? I don't know how this is pronounced. Track 2. Cardigan. Cardigan. It's a Yamaha piano. Not comfortable. True. I like the rhythm here. Hmm. Like cardigan. cardigan. What does cardigan mean? Hmm. 
Hmm. I love the shift into her head voice going from... Ah. Mine is totally in the head voice because I'm not singing as high as her, obviously, but that's cool. And she ends that softly. Okay, there's another piano layer, like, on top there. Or some keys, at least. But you couldn't. Mmm. Yeah, I got the goosebumps, guys. Oh. Yeah, that gave the chills. God, this is such a blast. And my back hair has got stood up for the, in that one. Three, the last great American dynasty. When you sent me the track for last great American dynasty, I had been wanting to write a song about Rebecca Harkness. Rebecca Harkness. Then when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, I think I can write the Rebecca Harkness story. <laughs> <laughs> it's a folklore moment to me because it's not about you, but it is all about you. Rebecca rode up on the afternoon. I like the percussion too here. The percussion sound. Wait. I don't know the story. <laughs> it's a cool twist. So she related with this story of Rebecca, right? Is that what is presented here? Track four, Exile, featuring Bon Iver, written by Taylor Swift, William Bowery, and Justin Vernon. That rings a bell, but I'm not sure. I only wish our other two co-writers were here. Justin oh. Vernon and William Bowery. There's been a lot of discussion about William Bowery and his identity. Wait, what? William Bowery is Joe. Oh, it is Joe. Wait, who is Joe? Exile was crazy because Joe had written that entire piano part. That dun 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 And it was singing the Bonnie Bear part. The I can see you standing, honey, with his arms around your yeah. body. Laughing, but the joke's not funny at all. And I... Too? Yeah, he was just singing it Jesus. the way that the whole first, first verse is. Wow. It was pretty obvious that it should be a duet because she's got such a low voice and it sounded really good mm. sung down there and yeah. in that register. And then um, we're really, really, really big Bonnie Bear fans. And, you know. So cool. We know that Aaron knows him. But we, <laughs> I, was, I was too afraid to suggest it. But I, I just, when I sent it to Aaron, I was like, this is a, hopefully a duet. We, I don't know who with and Aaron was like I think Justin would love this and we, when we talked about it I was like I think he's gonna be really inspired by this and when, and when we sent it to him he was like we didn't oh. you didn't ask him to write anything but he wrote yeah. this, he wrote this like he wrote this amazing bridge this Justin is that a member the singer of Bon Iver due to the pandemic Justin Vernon is performing from Eau Claire Wisconsin oh his, is he going to be in this performance but like from a distance from like abroad Oh, he is. Cool voice. Mm. Oof. When the voice of Justin comes in. Ooh. She was right. That low voice fits so good in there. 
Uf. It's not really like like a second layer of a voice. They do the same pitch. That's what I want to say. Like it's, it is like two voices complementing each other, but it's the same pitch. Only he sings it. I think it's one octave lower that he sings it. Because she sings quite low, actually, for a female too. I think. Here they have different pitches, very interesting, and very beautiful. So this is the part that Justin wrote. <sighs> Damn guys! Their voices are so good together. Oh. That was really good. I love that one. Five My Tears, Ricochet. I wrote that one alone. And it was, it's definitely, I think, one of the saddest songs on the album. You crowned it as a track five. Yeah, picking a track five is is sort of a pressurized decision. Why is a track five so special? I've never heard of like track five specifically being like very special on an album. I've never heard of that. It's kind of a song about karma, a song about how somebody could be your best friend and your companion and your most trusted person in your life and then they could go and become your worst enemy who knows how to hurt you because they were once your tr most trusted person. Well, that's very interesting because it's sometimes they say like keep your friends close but your en enemies closer. Truth about that is your enemies are just always closer than people that you don't know. There's a reason that there is some hate or some negative like some beef between both because there is some history. You know each other at least a bit, but it's like negativity. It could be that it was positive, like she said before, like in a relationship, and that afterwards it's the person that you want to see the least in your life. Like if you are if you break up, for example, it could be. But people that you don't know, you don't have any beef because you don't, you, you don't know them. You don't have any bad experience with them. It makes sense. Yeah. It does remind me of people going through a divorce and having that person that they swore to be with forever then become the person that they spend most of their time talking shit about. Yeah. Yeah. It's very powerful to me. So both Aaron and him play also piano, guitar and drums and such. That's pretty low for her. To my dying day. Damn, for a girl, that's not. Wow. That's deep. Look at all of my tears. Turning into your tears. Ooh. I love to like at the end when it's so quiet, when it's so like soft, you hear the pedal of the piano lifting up and going back down. You hear like a bit of the of the of the sound that you hear in headphones when, headphones when recording. That's how quiet it got at the end of this song. Makes you kind of quiet. Damn. So that was track five. Mirror Ball, written by Taylor Swift and Jack Antonoff. Okay. 
folklore, there are a lot of songs that reference each other or lyrical parallels. And one of the ones that I like is, is the entire song, This Is Me Trying, then being referenced again in Mirrorball, which is, I've never been a natural, all I do is try. Should I, I was like, is that too true? I just saw lonely disco ball, twinkly lights, neon signs people drinking beer by the bar, and I just was thinking, we have mirror balls in the middle of a dance floor because they reflect light, they are broken a million times, and that's what makes them so shiny. We have people like that in society, too. They hang there, and every time they break, it entertains us. That's an interesting take. It was a metaphor for celebrity, but it's also a metaphor for so many people who have to feel, I mean, everybody has to feel like they have to be on for certain people, you know, the pandemic and lockdown and all that runs through this album like a thread because it's an album that allows you to feel your feelings and it's a product of isolation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wrote this song right after I found out all my shows were canceled. And it's like, I'm still, oh, okay. I'm still trying everything to keep you, to get you laughing at me. And I know I have an excuse to sit back and not do something, but I, but I'm not. And I can't, and I don't know yeah, why don't that is. Interesting. The effect on the guitar gives some kind of dreamy feel, I, th I think, like. I'm a hmm. Like the bass coming in. Like the switch there, going up and down in octaves. It's not octaves, but... Yeah, it's just the jumps there. When they send home the horses and the rodeo clowns, I'm still on that tyro. I'm still trying everything to get you laughing at me. Damn. Interesting sound from the guitar there, too. But like the tiptoeing and the high heels, is that like basically meaning that I'm high up there? I'm high up there and I'm visible for everybody. Uh, and when I'm shining, like I'm shining for you, I'm hanging there because I get all the hate. I'm broken, but I'm still here. Is that basically what they, what she means with that? I like the metaphors in her songs here. With seven, the song I was looking back on it. I've always wondered. Seven. <laughs> wow, it's the seventh track. How okay, fitting. Throwing a massive tantrum in a grocery store. Like, part of me is like, man, I feel you. Like, when did I stop being so outraged that I would throw myself on the floor and throw the cereal at my mom? <laughs> so bas basically, instinct. What kids do, what kids feel, what, what kids, like, haven't learned being civilized and being, being polite and, and not doing anything wrong. Like, doing things that you're not supposed to do but from kids we know that it's not accepted but it's like they're kids <laughs> we learned that that's not the right thing to do but there's something lost there too it is because you keep those feelings to yourself and you have to deal with those another way because you can't not throw a, ta a tantrum down in the grocery store because it's it's not like you're not supposed to do that but how do you process those feelings of anger Okay, wait, it's like I hit my peak at seven feet. I was thinking like the height of a, of a person, but like that's... Most people are not seven feet, right? <laughs> like most people are like between five and six, something like that. Being high seven feet in. Why right, Pennsylvania? Nice reference. It's almost like the guitar gives some percussion as well. Because you just hear the guitar pick strumming over the strings. Like just the sound of that in combination with the percussion that is actually going on. They complement each other, I, th I think. It sounds like that.
Okay. I mean, it's specifically the sound of the guitar that makes so that the strumming sounds almost as loud as the as the notes that come out of the guitar. That's why it seemed to me like it was like part of the percussion. It is an interesting take. I also was thinking like when she told like moving to India and doing certain things, I was thinking like, yeah, these days a lot more people though do things that they really want to do without just... They want to live their lives, basically, without, like, delaying a lot of gratification, even though, like, I think a good midway in there is, is very healthy. Enjoy what you can do, right? Without, like, going too crazy, but I think that's also part of what she was saying, like, Ch children don't don't really have that mask on. They children are most of the times like more honest in their feelings. Like they're gonna show you if they're mad or if they're sad or if they're very happy or uh, if they're shy or whatever. And we adults don't always show that because we need to be polite. It's not done for us uh, to behave in certain ways. We we need to behave in certain ways to be accepted, to be good. And we're supposed to work, 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 earn money, make families and whatever. Um, and these days, a lot more people tend to try and enjoy themselves more. Each have their own way in which they experience joy uh, on the long term. Uh, and it's not for everybody the most healthy, perhaps, but it is important. And I think it's a good message, message that they give not to say that you have to <laughs> go in public and like scream and like be angry all of the time like but sometimes in the right time in the right place you can do that don't crop up your feelings like don't hold back on your feelings too long it's unhealthy august ha <laughs> okay so the eighth month uh month of the year august okay seems legit it's a weird experience uh, to work with you, and now Aaron can understand it. No, I'm serious because it's like, here's the song. Oh wait, here's the bridge. Wait, here's a better bridge. Okay, now it's a perfect bridge. What, ha <laughs> what happened in my head was okay. So like, Cardigan is Betty's perspective from okay. it's like 20 to 30 years later. I think Betty and James ended up together, but he really put her through it. Who are Betty and James? Am I missing something here? August was obviously about the girl that. James had this summer with. She's like really a sensitive person who like really fell for him. She was trying to let him think that she didn't care, but she really did and she thought they had something very real. And then he goes back to Betty. Everybody has feelings and wants to be seen and loved. Oh, by the way, I just noticed the fire here. So they are by the fire. Huh. Okay. It's most intense that we've heard on the album so far, I think. Cool. Summer love in August. August slipped away, the end of the summer. Haha. <laughs> Jack is so tense here. It's cool. Like, oh, it, I like that she uses August as like the month of August, but also like the name August. I like that. It's cool, like, they obviously use some tracks uh, as well, because there is, like, percussion in the background, too, where they play on top of it. I like the vibe of that song. And track nine, This Is Me Trying. Okay. I've been thinking about addiction, and I've been thinking about people who, if they're either suffering through mental illness or they're suffering through addiction, or they have an everyday struggle. No one pats them on the back every day, but every day they are actively fighting something. True, true. The hard thing about that 
like mental illness and like first of all there is different uh different amounts of addiction and illness because everybody deals with something sooner or later right and there's some period that everybody has to deal with sometimes should we all be patted on the back every day for that i'm not too sure like would it still be genuine first of all and second like would it have its full effect as when somebody just asks you out of nothing like are you okay if you want to talk talk to me i'm here for you i don't think you should be doing that every day it depends on a person like one person has more help with somebody being there every day for them than somebody else definitely some people that suffer need some more friends and some more genuine conversations to show their feelings to know it's okay the idea of doing your best or trying is one that only a person knows and yeah. you know when you're doing it and it's so hard uh, which is what I get from that song, when you're doing your damn best and it's not good enough. Yep. And it rarely is. It is. There's a lot of people that, and we all at certain points, like, feel like shit sometimes. In that point in time, it's hard to really, to really be motivated to do a lot of things. But if somebody has a problem and talks to me, I, I sometimes tell them, and I try to lift myself up on that quote as well, no matter how bad your situation is, no matter how bad you feel, remember that there's always at least one person in the world that has it worse than you and was able to get out of that situation. And it's, of course, easy to say that, but it can provide some, like, first of all, reality, but also realization and motivation that you can do this. You're able to overcome this. Most of the times. I mean, it depends on who. And sometimes it's not in your own power, of course. Like, if somebody is very sick, just some people genetically are able to get over a sickness whilst others can't. There's not always something you can do about it. But, like, being mentally depressed and, f and be feeling down, most of the times will not help the situation. Right? That's that's my thought on that. It's a very isolating feeling, which I think is funny because it actually is the thing that binds all of us. <laughs> We're all like doing our best. Exactly. Like it's not even close to good enough. Exactly. Someone who is in a sort of a life crisis has just been trying and failing and trying and failing in their relationship and kind of has driven to this overlook, this cliff. It's just in the car going, I could, it's like, yeah. I could do whatever I want in this moment and it could affect everything forever. Exactly. Like it only takes a choice. It only takes one choice to make such a decision, but it could change everything. And like they said in another song of, of this album, what would happen if I make this choice? That is, of course, like a very drastic choice. Like in every choice that you make, you could think like, what would happen if I choose this path what would I, what would happen if i choose this path this path and it could be like very important decisions it could be like something very small in decisions you never know yeah i love that the idea of that not driving off the cliff is an act of trying yeah Like that one, like the meaning of that too. All right, track 10, Illicit Affairs. Illicit, illicit affairs? First album that I've ever let go of that need to be 100% autobiographical because I think I felt like fans needed to hear like a stripped from the headlines account of my life. And, and it actually ended up being a bit 
confining. I think that's been my favorite thing about this album is that it's allowed to exist on its own merit without it just being, oh, people are listening to this because it tells them something that they could read in a tabloid. Make sure nobody sees you leave. Hold over your head, keep your eyes down. <laughs> That's interesting. When she says down, she goes up. Leave the perfume on the shelf that you picked out just for him. So you leave no trace behind, like you don't even exist. Hmm. A drug that only works. I like how it's built up this li the lyrics, how it's different every chorus basically, but similar. Invisible string. Invisible string. When I first heard the track that you sent me, they're in a different place. Pretty quickly, I came upon the idea of fate. Every step you're taking, you're taking one step closer to where you're supposed to be. You know guided by this little like invisible string mm, okay i couldn't believe opening up this like beautiful is it a 50s guitar that's it is from the late 50s wow. and it's been like uh, renovated so that the bridge deadens the strings and it sounds really old and it just a really kind of writes songs for you in a way and that was the first one that i wrote with it and then you wrote this incredible song that is all about fate and that was another moment where it just felt there was this serendipity happening between us and crazy chemistry. I wrote it right after I sent uh, an ex a baby gift. <laughs> like, and I was just like, man, life is great. Green was the color of the grass where I used to read in Centennial Park. Is that the guitar? All along there was some invisible string that you need to me. Bad was the blood. Bad blood. Bad was the blood of a song in the cab on your first trip to LA. Cold with the steel of my axe to grind for the boys who broke my heart. Mm. Now I spend their baby's presence. Hell was the journey, but it brought me heaven. Time, wonder is time. Give me the blue sand, purple, pink sky. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Mad Woman, track 12. How many tracks are on, on this album? It's got this, these, these sort of ominous strings underneath it, and I was like, oh, this is female rage. Like, this, <laughs> you know, for centuries we've been just expected to absorb male behavior. Silent absorption of whatever any guy decides to do. And oftentimes when we respond to somebody just doing something that was absolutely out of line that response is treated like the offense itself yeah mm -hmm. okay interesting but i've been trying so hard to figure out how do i say that how do i say why this feels so bad what did you think i'd say to that hoping and saying and fighting back Like how she went down there. Now a brief flame each time I talk, my cannons all fire in an actual yacht. Every time you call me crazy, getting more crazy. What about that? I'm taking my time, taking my time. Cause you took everything from me. Watching you climb, watching you climb over people like me.
Interesting. I like that one. Epi Epiphany? Who was that written about? Okay, also with Aaron. Epiphany. I think I really felt like there should be a string <clears> moment <throat> on the album because we were towards the end of it and it Some was strings. all very piano and acoustic. And you're so good with string arrangements and, you know, Bryce is, I mean, a genius. When I heard it, I remember thinking maybe I want to tell a sports story. <laughs> a sports story, okay. Just watch the last dance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thinking all in terms of sports and winners and underdogs and things like that. I'd been doing a lot of research on my grandfather who fought in World War II at Guadalcanal. He never talked about it, so my dad had to do a lot of research, and he and his brothers found out that, our, you know, my granddad was exposed to some of the worst situations you could ever imagine as a human being. And so I kind of tried to imagine what would happen in order to make you just never be able to speak about something. And then I, when I was thinking about that, I realized that there are people right now taking a 20-minute break in between shifts at a hospital who are having this kind of trauma happen to them right now that they will probably never mm -hmm. want to speak about. Yeah. I often feel with this album like there have been times in my life where things have fallen apart so methodically and nothing I did stopped it and I felt like I had just been pushed out of a plane and yeah. was like scratching okay. at the air on the way down and like I felt like just like the universe is just doing its thing and this is a weird situation where ever since I started making music with you I felt like that was like the universe forcing things to fall into place perfectly and there was nothing I could do. Yeah. Interesting. This lockdown could have been a time where I absolutely lost my mind. Exactly. Instead, I think, you know, yeah. this album was like a real... Those are the two situations. Two options. I mean, not options, but two possible outcomes. Some strings. Some org organs. Orgles. Like the muted guitar here too. It's not only the muted, but there's some echo in on it too that I like on the guitar. Like the meaning of the song too. All right, track 14, Betty. One of my favorite things about this record is the fact that there's this trilogy of three, the, the trinity of Betty, August, and Cardigan are all like, we made August together, we made Cardigan together, we all three it's perfect. made Betty together, and Betty was, I just heard Joe singing the entire fully formed chorus of Betty from another room. Yeah. Oh, so that's Betty from the track of August. So this was the first time we had a conversation where I came in and I was like, hey, this could be really weird and we could hate this. So could we just try to see what it's like if we write this song together. So he was singing the chorus of it and I thought it sounded really good sing from a man's voice, from a masculine perspective. And I really liked that it seemed to be an apology. Mm. And I've written so many songs from a female's perspective of wanting a male apology that we decided to make it from a teenage boy's perspective, apologizing after he loses the love of his life because he's 
and foolish. Wait, is William going to sing? Oh, she's been singing from the boy's perspective then, I think. You can't believe a word she says more times. This time it was true. But if I just showed up at your party, I was nowhere to be found. Plus, I saw you dance with him. The worst was what I did to you. They communicate. The only thing I want to do is make it up to you. So I showed up at your party. I like that. Yeah, I showed up at your party. Oh, I like the key change. Do you love me? Will you kiss me on the porch? Then it is your cardigan. Yeah, <laughs> cardigan. Nice. Really cool. Peace, track 15. The first word that I thought of was this is this is what peace sounds like. Maybe you just start with the obvious and think about how that could be told in an interesting way that kind of goes against the title. Like, I could never give you peace mm. over the most peaceful sounding instrumental track. Yeah. When, when I heard the bridge and that it, you traced all the weird timing and weird chord changes, it just felt like, okay, we can do anything. There are times when I feel like, ev with everything that's in my control, I can make myself seem like someone who doesn't have an abnormal life. If you're going to be in my life, I, I feel like there's a certain amount that comes with it that I can't stop from happening. Yeah. I can't stop from you getting a call in the morning that says, you know, the tabloids are writing this today, a guy with a long lens camera two miles away with a telescope lens taking pictures of you. Is it enough? Is the stuff that I can control enough? A lot of people related to it who aren't talking about the same things that I'm talking about. There's a lot of relatable things in this album, I feel like. It's like a chemical thing that happens sometimes. The music is a way of dealing with that for me. Someone that you love, so you want it to be, you want them to have as much peace in their life as possible. And, and reconciling the fact that you, you might not be their best option for that, but is it still a deal they want to take? Yeah. I like how the bass started there. And it's just around the corner, darling, because it lives in me. No, I could never give you peace. All these people think love for sure, but I would die for you in secret. Okay. I give you my sunshine, give you my best, but the rain is always gonna come. Be standing with me. You can't help that, the rain will come. Would it be enough if I could never give you peace? Okay. Let's see, what's next? Track 16, hoax. Okay, the word hoax is another word that I love. Because I love that it has an X, and I love the way that it looks, and I love the way it sounds. <laughs> okay. I think with this... But what's the meaning of hoax? On the album, it kind of... In oh, it's the last song. Confessions, um, incorporating nature, emotional volatility and ambiguity at the same time. Love that isn't just easy. It's a lot more... This album is like very personal and very uh, vulnerable. I mean, I, I feel like I get to know a lot about how she feels like and, and what she goes through in, in life as a person and, and not as an artist. I mean, as an artist as well, but like not from a fan's perspective, seeing, oh my God, this is my idol, like more like how she feels like, how it feels like to be an artist in her situation. And I remembered I asked you for advice on this one. Like to you it meant different things and that was a moment of like 
doubt or something? I definitely had the moment of doubt. I had the moment of like, I don't usually do this. I usually know exactly what I'm writing about. When you kind of pushed me forward, like, nope, do the thing that makes you uncomfortable because I think that's what makes it a song that really, to me, stands out. You let someone in and they get to know you and they know exactly what buttons to push to hurt you the most. Yeah, it makes you vulnerable. Like, who would you be sad with? And who would you deal with when they were sad? And like, gray skies every day for months, would you still stay? Yes. My only one, my smoking gun. How the guitar came in. Ha, huh, interesting. All right. Oh, there's a bonus track, The Lakes. Okay. I think The Lakes sort of sounds like a testament of what what I wanted to escape from and where I saw myself escaping. Um, we'd gone to the Lake District in England uh, a couple years ago. In the 19th century, you had a lot of poets like William Wordsworth and, and John Keats. There was a poet district, these, these artists that moved there. I remembered when we went, I thought, I, man, I could see this. I've always, in my career, written about this sort of cottage cottage backup plan that I have. You've been writing so about that forever. I've been writing, <laughs> about, writing about forever. About, you've been writing about getting out forever. Yeah, so The Lakes is, is really talking a lot about relating to people who hundreds of years ago had the same exit plan and did it. You just went away and you just you kept writing, but you didn't subscribe to the things that were killing you. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. It's not, I can't do this, I'm out. It's, I found something worth escaping with. Hoax as the ending song for the record, I thought was interesting for a couple weeks, but then I wanted to actually come in with the real last song of the record, mm -hmm. which is this song that, The Lakes, which shows you exactly what, it kind of is the overarching theme of the whole album, of trying to escape, having something you want to protect, trying to protect your own sanity, and saying, look, they did this hundreds of years ago. Yeah. I'm not the first person who's felt this way. They did this. Oh. I am not cut out for all these... <laughs> I don't belong, but not without my mule. Hmm, like that in guitar. Take me to the lakes where all the poets. I really like the bass down there, too. I want to watch with me grow right from my bare feet. Cause I haven't moved hmm. in years. So not without you. I really like that as the last song, actually. I think it's a good decision. I'm glad how to do it. <laughs> whiskey? So how, many days, so how many days went over this? And a whiskey would be, like, pretty fitting over there, I think. Oh, that's the end, or what? So the record was recorded here, my studio, and your house. Did you give it a name? I think it's called Kitty Committee Studio, because I've got cats fighting in the background... There was a big oh, a name for her house, her bedroom. <laughs> Guys, stop it. Stop. Stop. Benjamin always starts it and Olivia always finishes it. It really was bizarre, but it was at the same time my favorite recording experience. A very cool way to have made an album. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> well. <laughs> and the cat at the end. Big Branch Productions. That was it, guys.
I don't even know how long we've been recording for. Two hours and 18 minutes. Okay, it's not that bad. For a movie that's like an hour and 45 minutes long, I thought I was talking for for longer. And probably like there's some commentary that will be cut out because I just mess up a lot of the time. So it will be a bit shorter, I think, either way. Guys, that's it. There is another video that I will react to um, that Tal has suggested. Because a silver member um, that does a suggestion usually gets the reaction like within a week. But as he suggested his first request when I was in Hawaii, I wasn't able to do it. So I told him like, if it's okay with you, like when I get back, do another suggestion and I do two in a row for you then. And uh, he was okay with that. So another video that I will react to, but I have still have to confirm on that, is his requests, the Reputation Stadium Tour from her. So I think that'll be more like a live concert-like instead of like a studio performance. But I guess I'll find out. I'll send him like after this recording right away so that I have the video that I'm going to react to. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my reaction. Tell, I hope you enjoyed my reaction, of course, as well. Like I said, I will post this on YouTube afterwards as well. Uh, but like a cut up version, definitely. Usually with concerts, I post the separate songs. But in this one, Tal specifically asked me like to uh, put the full uh, reaction on it. Like maybe cut up but like the the full thing because like the swifties like to uh watch these long reactions apparently so i guess i'll find out either way so yeah that's it guys don't forget to subscribe like and share the video also don't forget to check out some of my other reaction videos go check out my youtube channel if you're on patreon go check out my patreon if you're on youtube i also have music videos and tutorials for you guys to check out so thank you very much and see you guys next time bye A couple of days ago at the point of this, it has been a week ago, no, a couple of, it has, um, so I hope, I hope there's a lot. <laughs> it's my first simple, so, the first film, uh, I'll clean, I'm completely, uh, the movie is, uh, like, it's that mine, could, I mean, like, like, uh, kind of, like, pretty, that's, that was actually the, the, of you won't get back up you go, if there's um if if there's no very coincident as just for vernon Ver, vernon i'm i'm like like uh like um like I, i'm always i want like uh having like the the uh, but you should and it, it, we need to be uh it's not so it's like the, again like uh, shout out like like ever like the, the the hard thing about this like I usually if and and um and like I I know there's uh I'm I guess I'm fine I'm gonna go check out my Patreon if you're on YouTube and you go check out my show.